Hey, what's up everybody? DDF44 coming at you with another video. So, I'm just getting around to hearing Russ Book's comments about uh, the Laker crowd and him not paying attention to him. Uh, they asked him specifically if, if he was listening to the crowd shift in a negative way. Um, and I think his natural reaction is to blot out all negative chants against him. You know, he's trying to He's trying to trying to deal with a very tough season. Obviously, his home games have been, you know, worse than his road games. He's obviously not uh, having his best games at the at Staples slash Crow, and um, you know, I think that kind of was the motivation behind his, what he said there. Um, now, do I think he has? it in his mind that all Laker fans hate him and want him gone. I don't I don't probably believe he thinks that. I mean there's no way of knowing what a man thinks, but I think in that moment he was answering the question. Um based on how he how he felt at the time. I don't think that's how he feels when the when he dunks the ball and he's feeling good about himself and they're screaming. You know what I mean? I, I think that's how he feels when when they're booing him. And when, they, when when they're re reacting negatively, you know, and, and it's important that athletes kind of have that mentality in a way, um, because you got to be able to focus through negative energy. You got to be able to focus through uh, crowd momentum. You know, a lot of times teams lose games because players are tight. When the momentum gets tight, players are not able to, uh, you know, handle that that type of um, reaction to their to their mistakes and things of that nature. You got to be able to you know, tune all that out so that you can do the job and do it properly. And I think that that's, that's also something you could say about what Russell was uh, kind of referring to is just blotting it out entirely, whether it's good or bad. Just you got to ignore it. You got to focus on what you're doing. Um, so that's, that's, that's one point of view. You could try to take it. If you want to kind of take the positive route, that's, that's the point of view. I think a lot of people are, are going to take the negative route. I think that's, a natural way of looking at it and if you want to take that route we can discuss that if i want to assume that that russell Westbrook is just saying exactly you know if i'm to take what he's saying at face value uh what he showed us he didn't care you know that's what he, that's what he said give a damn um we know that he's ready to part ways with the lakers he's his side has made that clear our side has made that clear as well um you know they're in agreements that they're going to look for him a new home in the off season. So at this point, it, it wouldn't be entirely uh, unreasonable for him to not feel at home at this, in, at this juncture, you know, I mean, given the fact that he's already basically told everybody he's leaving, um, if, if at all possible. So I don't, I don't think we all have to lie about the situation. It hasn't been good. You know, I think, I think circumstances have made it so that, Russell Westbrook hasn't enjoyed being a Laker, and Laker fans haven't really enjoyed his tenure. Um, listen, we wish it would have been different. We wish the Lakers would have made good decisions with the roster, um, and, and, and that would have helped a lot. You know, if you want to look at Russell Westbrook and some of the mistakes he's made, it's very fair. But if you look at the circumstances he was put in, uh, you could clearly see that he was kind of coerced, more or less, into making mistakes by being put in situations that are basically the opposite of what he's about and the opposite of what his game is about and uh, exploiting his weaknesses and, and leaving him without opportunities to have things that he needed to be successful um, and I think the Lakers did a great job of neglecting his needs as a basketball player um, in the presence of all of this this chaos that was yet another mistake that they've made so you know, I don't blame Russell Westbrook for not vibing, so to speak, with, with Laker Nation. I don't think that there's a whole lot to enjoy. You know, when he's played poor, the crowd has booed him. He's played poor a lot, <laughs> so he's been booed a lot. And then when he wakes up in the morning, turns on his TV, he hears Skip, Shannon, talking what they got to say, and then they run the plooper reel. That doesn't help any. Turns on Shaq and them. I'm sure they got things to say. Turn on... Stephen A, he's got stuff to say. I mean, you know, now you can look up and say, well, all he has to do is play better. But obviously, if he could just flip a switch and play better, I'm pretty sure he'd flip that switch. I don't think it kind of works that way. 
he struggled mightily and um, probably needed some positivity and support, needed some people to kind of ignore those mistakes and root him on to kind of give him that confidence um, that he needs. And that's just not going to come from a brand new franchise that doesn't know you, doesn't love you, and is looking for you to deliver on championship expectations. We are not OKC. Um, you know, we didn't grow up on Russell Westbrook, and we're not going to sit here and, and take his crap, you know what I mean? And and just continue to just, you know, blindly root for him like he Kobe or something. That's just not how this works. He understands that. We understand that. And it's just a product of the circumstance. It's not, it's not anybody's fault, man. This has just been a bad situation. Um, a lot of things fell out of place. Things that otherwise would have been in place. Uh, if injuries weren't in the in in in, in the fold and and so on and so forth, so I don't really feel bad for anybody. I don't feel bad for Russell Westbrook. If anything, I feel bad for us fans who have to sit here and endure this nonsense. It's a bunch of chaos. Uh, but I think I think the guys have handled this about as well as you can. You know, I really do. I think players have played circumstances where they other where otherwise they could have sat. Uh, I think guys have, you know, a guy like Russell Westbrook with all the stuff that he's had to face, he could have faked an injury a long time ago and just rid himself of this bull crap. You know what I mean? But he stuck it out. He showed up to work every day. And I don't think a lot of people would have under the circumstances he's in. So not only has he struggled and looked, you know, embarrassingly bad, but he's also had to, uh, you know, put up with the fact that expectations have been placed upon this team that they haven't met. And that hurts him uh, historically as well. So it's just a lot of stuff that you could just point at him and say, yeah, I can see where he would mail it in. And he hasn't. So if he really had disrespect for us fans, he probably would have done that already. So I think that's something to think about when listening to words that come out of his mouth. Because at the end of the day, he's running around for us. He's sweating. And he's, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. And he, he's already proven enough in this league to um, not have to put up with the poor fit and the scrutiny and all that he could just very easily say you know what i'm cool y'all figure it out on your own i hurt my hamstring i'm out for the season good luck you guys and he didn't do that neither did Bron. so and and 80 though it hurt we know for a fact he wasn't faking it so you just got to give credit to the guys and ultimately um you know as you view his statements particularly westbrook statements uh give some consideration to the other aspects of it um, because I know a lot of us, if we were in the circumstances being humiliated and looking the way that he did, um, I don't know that we would have a whole lot better things to say about the crowd uh, rooting against us as we do. You know what I mean? Or holding us accountable, rather, as we do. Can't feel good to be on his end, listening to them booze done in night out, you know, knowing that you can't do nothing about it. Especially when you're used to to cheers you're you've had an mvp in this league you know you've been many all-stars and all that um this hasn't been the easiest thing i would imagine so i give i give russell a pass uh for the most part but he does um you know need to be aware of how he's coming off night in and night out in these press conferences these la media pundits are complaining about him as much as they've complained about anybody ever like literally every night I hear about them saying, oh, he's so aloof. Oh, he just doesn't care. He always acts like we're asking him the most stupid questions. And I think, I, I, I don't know, man. I look at it like Russell Westbrook is a grand overall reaction to the years and years and years of bad questioning and baiting. And just overall bad taste behavior that takes place in these press conferences um, where these players have either been too honest and end up having to face consequences for that honesty after being asked a bunch of bad questions or have had to suppress that and, um, you know, have had just had to let, let it be as it is, even though they've been frustrated and felt disrespected or whatever they felt you know what i mean it's been years and years where i've listened to them just ask 
questions that don't do anything but but antagonize. They don't do anything but make you feel like blowing up. And then they sit back and, and, and enjoy the, the sound bites. It's just and now Russell Westbrook is a, is a response to that. Now every question you ask, he gonna give you that response. That all of those athletes should have been giving you every time you gave them awful questions to answer, stupid questions to answer, antagonizing questions to answer. You know, sometimes questions that weren't even posed for any other reason than to shine a light on the person asking the question. I mean, some of this stuff is just like, you know what? I don't blame Russell Westbrook for reacting to them. I don't blame Kyrie Irving for not wanting to talk to them. I don't blame some athletes for cussing them out because at the end of the day, I've been watching as a consumer, and all they do is irritate. That's all they do. I mean, they'll ask certain questions. Some of them are really good. Don't get it twisted. I'm not sitting here saying the whole field is this way, but the lay of the land makes it so that they they basically do behave this way. It is what it is. Um, so, yeah, I'm not one of those people that says, oh, Russell Westbrook's so mean to them. Yeah, I've watched them be mean to athletes for 30 years. Nah, Russell's fine. He's not doing nothing to these people that they invented him. Um, so I encourage athletes to obviously uh, follow what's in your contract. You know what I mean? In your contract, you have to talk to these people. So that's that's basically what I'm saying. But when you get up there, um, you don't owe these people nothing. No more than, your, than what it is that's in your contract. If you don't want to answer questions, don't answer. Trust me. As a consumer, I'm just as amused at watching them be uncomfortable with you not answering their questions as they are amused at you answering them questions that make you uncomfortable. Believe me. Give them what you want them to have. We as a consumer will be fine with what we get. Trust me on that. Because that's another thing they do is they, they like to pray, place pressure on these athletes as if they're supposed to accompany them in doing their job. Like, nah. No. <laughs> I, I'll give you what I feel like giving you. You know what I mean? It's bad enough they force these athletes to talk to these people. Now I got to be compelling? Get out of here. I just think that part of the job is not what these kids sign up for when they want to shoot a basketball around. I'm sorry. That part of the game is is is, is part of promoting the, the game, but it should not be something that uh, we shun athletes for not being masters at. I, I just never agree with that. I was always cool with watching Rasheed Wallace in whatever he had to say at the end of the games. I was always cool with you know, players that just didn't want to talk to these dudes. As long as y'all ran around, gave us, the fans, what we wanted from from, from that standpoint, man, whatever else you give us is, is appreciated. That's how I feel about it. So, with that being said, you know, Russell Westbrook, there's no way of knowing what a man truly feels, but if I were him, I'd probably be tired of us too. Uh, but he needs to understand that that if he, if he were us, we'd be he'd be tired of him. You know, it is what it is. He ain't played well. It ain't our fault. That's the bottom line, homie. That ain't our fault. If you would have been balling out, we'd have been cheering. Don't lose sight of that. Please don't lose sight of that. So that's what I got to say, man. That's what it is, man. BDF 44. I'll have a video for you tomorrow. The Lakers play the Nuggets early at 1230. Um, I'm, you know, my excitement for that game is, is, is on the floor. I don't care too much for this season anymore. Um. I'm just going to keep my channel going and keep up with my team because that's what I do. I think a lot of fun is going to be had in the off season when we talk about how, how this team is either going to further ruin their situation, which I'm betting they probably will, or fix their situation, which I'm hopeful I'm wrong about. Um, and we'll keep compelling content even when the season's gone because, uh, you know, right now it's hard, man. It's hard. I don't care nothing about these games. I don't care nothing about this roster. You know what I mean? But I'm trying to keep this content going. So that's what it is. <laughs> BDF 44. I thank y'all for watching. And I'm out.